Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. This time we are talking about the Ruger Standard Semi-Automatic Pistol, a gun invented by Bill Ruger that kind of invented Sturm Ruger and Company. In 1949, Bill Ruger made a couple of copies in his garage of a baby Nambu he bought from a returning Marine, and he showed them to his buddy Alex Sturm who was very impressed and offered him $50,000 to start his own firearms manufacturing business, which he did. And their first pistol was the Ruger Standard 22 Long Rifle. They also made the Mark I, which was the same gun with an adjustable sight. Since then, there have been a number of descendants and variations of this gun. But this is the gun that started it all. Not this particular gun, of course. This one was made in 1973. <clears throat> but this is the model. And you may notice that it's rather Luger-ish looking. This is not an accident. Um, Bill Ruger and Alex Sturm thought that having the Luger-esque slash Nambu-esque slash Colts Woodman-esque grip would be good for marketing because it would maybe inspire nostalgia in World War II veterans for the take-home Nambus and Lugers and things of that nature. And he got started in 1949 and $50,000 was a lot more money than it is now. I don't think I need to tell you. And the guns were very good, but they didn't achieve real success until they'd almost completely run through the original $50,000 when American Rifleman published an article about it with a glowing review, not coincidentally, with a small ad placed by Ruger in the magazine, and they took off from there. And this gun was the genesis of Sturm Ruger and Company and became the backbone of the company for many years. Now, a couple decades later, Sturm Ruger and Company had branched out wildly into single and double action revolvers, shotguns, rifles of all different kinds, even a submachine gun, and had made over 20 million firearms. Anyway, let's have a look at this on the table. The Ruger Standard Semi-Automatic Pistol is not a small pistol. It is a full-size pistol made entirely out of steel, so it's a fairly good chunk in the hand. Not at all lightweight. Now, to unload and show clear, you have a heel-based magazine release, and you pop it and pull the magazine out. And then, of course, withdraw the bolt to make sure there's no cartridge in the chamber. And the gun has very nice, well-textured checkered grips. And the shape of the grip really locks it into the hand. The sights are black on black with a front post and notch rear. Provides a very good sight picture against, say, a target background. And it is, as you can see, an undercut target style front sight. Uh, the grip will be a little strange for a lot of people because it will tend to point high. This works for me because I was trained to pick up the front sight and then level the gun to bring up the rear sight around the front sight. So that actually works great for me. Now, disassembly for these is widely held to be a nightmare. And until doing this video, I have not found it so myself. But of course, since I'm doing a video, it will probably be a disaster and annoying, but we're going to do it anyway. The first step is to pull the trigger. Now, it's not a good idea to dry fire rim fire guns, but on this one, you have to. And so it's sort of designed to accommodate that fact. So. Check the chamber, pull the trigger, and you will notice back here, there is a lever. 
and a nice relief around it so you can pry the lever up. Now, you have to pull the trigger to drop the hammer to take tension off the hammer spring because this is the hammer spring housing. And to remove it, you pry this lever up. Now, it's really not recommended to use your fingernail because it's pretty easy to stab that up under your fingernail. But I have pretty tough hands from my work. Once you've gotten to this point, the housing pops out, you rotate it, and you pull it down, which takes some force, and that removes this rod and allows the bolt to be withdrawn. And very simple. If it gets stuck, just jiggle it a little bit until we maybe pull the trigger again and it will come out. And you can see here is the recoil spring. This post goes through that and keeps the whole thing from flying in your face when you fire it and cycle the gun. Now to remove the upper receiver, you're supposed to grip the barrel firmly, press hard against the trigger guard and push on the back and it will slide forward and pop right off. Unless it's this gun, in which case I am going to, it's, it's, I'm guessing it's never been apart because it's extremely stiff and I'm going to have to take uh, the nylon mallet and drive it off the first time. And I didn't really want to do that before I do this video. Now, putting it back together is where things get fussy. You have this little hammer spur here. It's actually the uh, driving rod that pushes the hammer forward when it engages with this spring piston in the hammer spring housing. So you want to make sure that that's free and not bound up by anything or anywhere and reinsert the bolt. And as I say, I wouldn't characterize it as a nightmare, but it can very definitely be fussy. So take the hammer spring housing, place the hook in this slot, place the rod where it goes and push up until it snaps into place which it will do. And you can see at the top where it protrudes when you're in the right place. Now is where that little hammer drive rod can become annoying because if it gets in the wrong place, it will cause you to lever out that pin when you try. So I say, I wouldn't really say it's nightmarish but it would be fair to say that it's fussy. If you're having difficulty, pull the trigger and that will fall into place if the hammer spur is not correctly located or the hammer drive rod or whatever you call it. You know you've gotten it in the right place when there's tension on the housing when you get this far. You can see the springiness at that point. You just rotate the lever back and you are once again in business. Now this is a single action auto with a hammer. And so the trigger pull is very light. There's a little take up and then it breaks very light and crisp. And the reset is pretty short. So it's very easy to rapid fire these guns. Now the magazine is steeply sloped, of course, to fit in the handle. And this also has the salutary effect of preventing rim lock where rimmed cartridges and magazine can get out of order and cause it to jam up. You can't do that in this because the way the cartridges sit, the rim of the upper cartridge is well below the rim of the lower cartridge. Now, this stud allows you to withdraw the follower. And on earliest guns, this was on the this side, the right side of the magazine. By the time they made this one, it's on the left side. And I'm not sure why, but I don't really care either. So pull the receiver down, drop a cartridge in and shake it till it falls correctly in the magazine and rinse and repeat until you have loaded 
all nine rounds that the magazine holds. And if one gets hung up a little bit, just shake the magazine and it will drop. And there we are, full up. And of course, then you just insert the magazine, withdraw and release the bolt, and it loads cartridges. So, this gun is actually very reliable. This ammunition, by the way, is period correct for the gun because it's Sears brand, store brand ammunition from um, the same era as the gun, the late 70s or early 70s or late 60s. And uh, the gun functions quite well with it. I put 50 rounds of this stored at the range this afternoon, and it cycled flawlessly. I also ran a mixture of CCI mini mags and CCI stingers through it, as well as some less identifiable random 22 ammo that was sitting around. And uh, for a total of about 100 rounds, and I did not have a single malfunction, um, which the guns are kind of famous for. And um, it is a solid and not lightweight gun, but it feels very good in the hand, and it's very pleasant to shoot. And it's very easy to shoot rapidly and accurately, which is fun for plinking. And as a plinking, small game, practice, target pistol. These guns are really hard to beat. There are literally millions of these guns and its descendants um, in circulation. They were very popular. Um, they were relatively inexpensive. They were stout bulletproof, I mean, so to speak, extremely reliable, I mean to say, and quite accurate. Anyway, like I said, there were a lot of variants. As the original tooling was wearing out, pretty worn out by 1981, they launched the Mark II, which had a slide lock open on the last round of the magazine, which this one does not. So they're great guns. Um, you can still find them for about $300 if you shop carefully. There are people, of course, on Gunbroker asking for silly money for them, which is encouraging certain shop owners to ask silly money for them. Um, this one I got at quite a good price. I'm very happy with it. And again, um, it's a gun I've always admired and always wanted one, and now I have one. And one of my kids will inherit it because I'm not getting rid of it. <laughs> oh, if you like what you see here, please click like and maybe consider subscribing. And if you really like what you see and want to support my efforts, consider clicking the link below in the description and supporting me on Patreon. I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.